Hello fellow problem solvers, so today we're doing some problem solving technique building, yay! So, I just you tried this for about 20, actually about 40-ish minutes, this one. So now let's begin. This is cool number theory, so how are we going to do this? 3 to the x minus 2 to the y is in the absolute values 1, solve it in positive integers. Interesting, right? It's, it's an interesting problem. And let's look. So maybe the first, first sort of thing to do is like, let me look at this as two separate problems. Either this is one or a negative one. In other words, we either have three to the x minus two to the y is one, or we have three, or we have two to the y minus three to the x is one, right? I want to solve these as two separate problems just because then I know what I'm dealing with really. And if I solve both of these, like it's still the same problem. I can just focus on these two. If you haven't done this, please pause for another 10 minutes, push it further, push, 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 push. And now let's continue. So let's start with this one. Well, it's nicer. One solution is one, one. That's why it's nicer to me. So one solution is actually one, one. And say, what if y is, say, then what do we have? We have nine, 27. Let's actually run a couple of these down. 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256. And for 3, we have 3, 9, 27, 81, 243. Powers of 3 are like much rarer that you have to think about them. Oh, what is 3 to the power of, what is this going to be? 3 to the power of 6 um, times 3, 70. Two nine. That sounds about right. The sum of the digits is divisible by nine. That's what I'm really looking at here. And then, honestly, I don't think we're gonna have more solutions. And if we do, then I'm not gonna solve this problem. I didn't realize that we're not. Maybe, like in a, if this wasn't technique building, I would actually tell you, try out the next couple of powers of three. You know, but it's technique building, so boom, boom, boom. We just need a couple of these cases, and we see the solutions are. 4 minus 3, 3 minus 2, 9 minus 8, and that's about it. Those are all our solutions. So let's look at this case. If y is equal to 1, we're okay, we're just done. And x is equal to 1. So xy is 1, 1. And then, no, actually, this is the correct way to write it down. Now, how do I solve this? Well, if y is greater than or equal to 2, that's what we're looking at now. Well, this is divisible by 4. And what is this when divided by 4? What is its remainder? Yeah. Well, the remainder of 3 to the x is the remainder of minus 3 to the x. And it needs to be the same as 1. It needs to be congruent to 1 modulo 4. Which means what? It means x is even. 3 to the x minus 2. Like when you have modular arithmetic, you can have a... 5 modulo 7 is the same as minus 2 modulo 7. You can do these sorts of plus and minus tricks. And what does this give us? So now this means 2 divides x. And so x is equal to 2 times some, say, a. Okay. That's nice. x is equal to 2, 2 times a. Yay. And now what do we have? We have the equation becomes 3 to the 2 a minus 2 to the x is 1. What do we do here? Technique building, boom. This is one squared. <laughs> I mean, that's the great thing about one. One is one squared, one to the three, one to the four, whenever you need a power, one is the power that you need. So you take this here, you take that there, and now it's a difference of squares. Three to the two a is three to the a squared. So you have three to the a squared minus one squared is two to the x. And a difference of squares is always nice because you get what? You get something of the sort a, like in this case, k times l is a constant thing whose factors you know. Now, how do we solve this? Well, this must be 2 to the power of some alpha and 2 to the power of some beta, where alpha plus beta is equal to x, and alpha and beta are given these are integers, then alpha and beta are non-negative integers. All right, they can be like alpha can be zero, for example. And with that, we have, what do you do? 
you're free to the a minus 1 is 2 to the alpha, free to the a plus 1 is equal to 2 to the beta. How are you ever going to solve this? Well, subtract, get a 1. And you have 2, I mean, you get 2 is equal to 2 to the beta minus 2 to the alpha. Now, this is divisible by 2. I mean, x is greater than or equal to 2 in this case. So at least beta is greater than or equal to 1. Beta is greater than or equal to alpha here because this is bigger than this. And so this is divisible by 2. This is, so this must be as well, which means alpha is greater than or equal to 1 from this thing right here. And then we can divide by 2, and we get 1 is equal to 2 to the beta minus 1 minus 2 to the alpha minus 1. Now, what about this? This are alpha and beta, so, okay, maybe we say for x equals 2, 3, 4, do we get a solution, actually? For x equals 2, 1, 2, 3, so for x is, actually, no, for y equals 2. Did I just switch the signs somewhere along the line? Oh, it looks like I did. I just wrote this as, this is 2 to y accidentally. y is greater than or equal to 2. So for y equals, okay, that was a bit messy. So for y is 3, I'll get a 9. Well, let's say I've also tried that out, and then y is... Uh, greater than or equal to 4, right? We found a solution. Because when you pick one of these, when you pick one of these here, when you pick a y, then you have, for y is 3, 3 to the x is equal to 9, x must be 2. That's, that's that, that's that. But here, let's say y is greater than or equal to 4. And then beta, given it's the bigger one of these, is greater than or equal to 2. So now, 2 to the beta minus 1, divisible by 2, which means what? This one ain't, which means what? Alpha must be 1. I mean, there's other ways of going about this, I'm sure. Actually, we don't, we don't need to do this. This is like unnecessary. We could. It really depends where you want to, like how you want to structure your proof. But we can say, okay, if alpha isn't equal to beta, assume that, then if both of these are even, we have an even minus an even, that's an odd. Impossible if both of these are odd. Again, odd minus odd is odd. Impossible. So alpha and beta are different. Now, what does this mean? Well, this means that we can't have, if alpha is greater than or equal to 2, then this is even and this is even. Oh, that's bad because then even minus even is not an odd. Which means what? Alpha minus 1 needs to be equal to 0, as this needs to be equal to 1. And so we get alpha is equal to 1. What does this tell us? Kaboom. 3 to the a minus 1 is equal to 2 to the 1. Which tells us what? 3 to the a is equal to 2 plus 1. Which is equal to, come on, first grade math is equal to 3. Then a is equal to 1. Because this is 3 to the first. So then a is 1, which means x is 2. And so now we've solved our solution. And then this solves the, this part of the problem. We've said, okay, let's assume that what's it called y is greater than or equal to 2. For y is 1, we have this solution. Let's say it, let's see if there's solutions for y is greater than or equal to 2. Then we say, look at module 4. Oh, I look at module 4. It tells me what? It tells me that x is even. Okay, right, x is 2 times a. And then I write a set of a difference of squares. And then boom, 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 done. Casework done. Really, this is, this is just like a general casework now. And this finishes up our problem, right? It tells us that alpha is 1, then we get what beta is. But we don't even need to solve the other one, really. <laughs> we are just... We get what a is, and then we get what beta is. So now, if you haven't seen this technique before, I invite you, try this problem out now. Try this other one. One solution is 4 minus 3 is 1. You're very much welcome. And now I invite you to try to find if there's any other solutions or if those are the only ones. Prove that. I'm going to clear this board up. So, board's cleared. Whoa, magic of cutting out the videos and editing. Again, this is what I do. So, what is this? Well, this here, we're going to have, okay. Okay, okay. 
What happens if we try that modulo 4 again? We'll get that minus 3, so we'll get minus 3 to the x, if y is greater than or equal to 2, right? This is here, then this is minus 3 to the x. This congruence is 1 modulo 4. Or minus, minus 1 to the x is 1 modulo 4. Or minus 1 to the x is minus 1 modulo 4. So 2 doesn't divide x, x is odd. Can we use that in some way, shape, or form? But actually, we can. Actually, we could. Actually, no, we can't. It would be. Let me figure out what we can. We could then put this on the other side, right? This says 3 to the 2k plus 1 plus 1 to the 2k plus 1 is equal to 3 plus 1 times 1 plus 3 plus 3 squared plus all the way to 3 to the 2k. Actually, no, it's not plus. It's it goes somewhere like, it's like 1 minus 3 plus 3 squared minus 3 cubed plus and all the way plus and minuses alternate. It's messy. Let's see before we try it out. Because the other thing in the parentheses is messy. Let's see if there's anything to do with 2 to the power of y. Actually, now that I think about it, how messy is it really? Is it messier than life? But no, let's actually look at what happens with y. So let's look at maybe instead of modulo, what's it called? Modulo 4. Let's look at modulo 3. Because then we'll get that this is minus 1 to the power of y. That's what 2 is. 2 to the y is modulo 3. This congruence is 2. 1 modulo 3. Right. And now we get 2 divides y. Kaboom, kaboom, kaboom. This also goes show. Like when you're here chasing what remainders to look at, you're going to try out a bunch of different things until you pick the right one. And sometimes you actually go ahead and you write down. 1 minus 3 plus 9 minus 27 plus all the way till plus the minus and then you have a plus 3 to the 2k right you write out those pluses and minuses and then you try something and a fail and that's okay that's the process the process is you try you fail you try you fail and then maybe one day you actually do make it maybe maybe there's no guarantees here this is math. So we have 2 <laughs> divides y, then y is equal to 2 times some z. Now what do we have here? Well, this is 2 to the power of z squared minus 1 is equal to 3 to the, to the x. I almost switched them again. So now what this is, the difference of squares. So boom, now it's a difference of squares. And now I have 2 to the z minus 1 times 2 to the z plus 1 is 3 to the power of x. Now what do I do? Well, this is 3 to the alpha, 3 to the beta. When I subtract these two, I subtract this one from this one, I'll get 3 to the beta minus 3 to the alpha is equal to 2. What does this mean? Please, please, please pause for two minutes and tell me what does this mean? Well, if alpha was greater than or equal to 1 and beta was greater than or equal to 1, don't mind you here, alpha is less than or equal to beta because this is bigger than this. And so its powers of 3 needs to be greater than or equal to that one. Now, if alpha was at least 1, then this would be divisible by 3, this would, and then we'd need this to be divisible by 3. However, 2 is not divisible by 3. And so we have alpha is equal to 0. Boom, magic. And now, because alpha is equal to zero, what does that give us? Well, that gives us, my friends, my fellow problem solvers, that gives us that 2 to the z minus 1 is equal to 3 to the zeros, which is 1. So, z, 2 to the z is equal to 2, which is that. 2 to the z is equal to 2 to the first, which means z is equal to 1, which means y is equal to 2. And then z is 1, y still gives us what? y is 2 gives us that x is equal to 1. And then we have our solution. And this is how we've shown that the only solutions to this problem, to this equation, are x and y that are equal to 1, 1. And then we have a 2, 1, so a 1, 2. A 1, 2, a 3, 2, a 1, 2, 3, 4. And then here, 
we also had a 9 minus 8, which was a 2, 3. Also, something interestingly, not something that we can actually prove, but the only solution to a to the x minus b to the y equals 1, where all of these numbers are greater than 1, is the, and they're positive integers, is the pair 3 squared minus 2 cubed. I think that is actually very, very cool. And this finishes up our problem. And as always, thanks for problem solving.